Hi, we all know what a switch is. We might not know how to wire it, but what I'm trying to say is MOSFET is basically a switch. You use it as a switch. It connects and disconnects. You can use it as an amplifier, but who uses it as an amplifier? MOSFET is a type of transistor that has revolutionized our technology. Well, right after BJ transistors revolutionized and pretty much replaced all those pesky vacuum tubes, they can be made to switch on and off at gigahertz speeds or made to switch thousands of amps on and off or handle thousands of volts. You may remember from my old video how single dumb switches can be put together to create artificial intelligence stronger than what a human brain can operate at. In some cases so far. Middle Eastern, but I said no beard. No beard, I said. No beard. It can't imagine a Middle Eastern man with no beard. Those computers run on single dumb switches that are MOSFETs. Of course, computers with artificial intelligence have to be trained to be able to do anything useful. You can learn all about AI at my sponsor Brilliant.org for free for 30 days from my link below. More at the end. Let's learn about MOSFET transistors though. It is typically a three-legged component as usual. The legs are called gate, drain and source because I don't care why they name them like that. And it acts like a switch between drain and source terminals that can close and open by a voltage on gate. So for example, we... Let's learn a bit more before using this stuff. I think we have to start at fetus stage. I explained in my diodes video that there are two general types of semiconductors, P and N, which can individually conduct electricity pretty well. They are both electrically neutral, but when you fuse them together, P shows positive behavior as if it lacks electrons or rather has holes and N shows negative behavior as if it has extra loose electrons. So some electrons move from N to P. So they will be extra happy if you place a voltage across them to move electrons in their desired direction. But if you place the voltage backwards, you can't push electrons backwards and the current is blocked. So you have a diode. Now imagine we have a big P-type silicon and we make two regions of N-type silicon on the sides and connect two terminals to it. It would be as if we have two reverse diodes back to back, so current can't flow either way. Let's connect another terminal to the main P-type silicon we call a substrate. Then we grow a piece of thin glass up there, oxidizing the silicon between the two end terminals for insulation, and deposit a layer of aluminum on top of it. The aluminum terminal is called gate. Now, if instead of NPN we had all ends, there was no blockage, we had a conductive semiconductor that current could flow through in either direction. If only there was a way to drive the P out of the P semiconductor and turn it into N. What there is? That is a capacitor with two conductors and a glass dielectric in the middle. We put positive voltage on the gate and a negative on substrate and suck the electrons off the aluminum plates, which in return pulls electrons in the P region. And we know P is happy to have electrons. But to what extent? P is like, oh yeah, fill all my holes with electrons. Give me. No, okay, okay, stop it, I'm done. Let's stop, uh, please, no more electrons. So we fill the receptive holes in the P semiconductor, which takes a minimum voltage we call threshold voltage or VTH. Any voltage above that sucks extra electrons into a thin channel close to the dielectric that forces the P out of that channel. And now the channel is a semiconductor with excess loose electrons and starts behaving like an N semiconductor. There is no blockage anymore. Our transistor turns on and the current can flow in either direction through a thin channel we created by converting P semiconductor into N by force. So we call this an N-channel transistor. Now, to have a separate voltage for gate substrate and another between the two terminals makes it a bit complicated. So for most such transistors, they just tie the substrate to one of the terminals. They call this new leg source and the other leg drain, like I mentioned before. And so we have what we call a FET or field effect transistor. 
because it works with the electric fields in the gate to substrate slash source capacitor. The MOS added to the FET stands for metal oxide semiconductor which refers to the popular material they're made of. There are different types of FETs out there, all work with the same principles, and MOSFET is the most popular between them. Of course, we can flip the NPN configuration into PNP, and now we have to convert N into P by supplying a reverse voltage on gate source and push electrons out of it, forcing P into I'm done with that joke. We are creating a P channel. So we have N channel and P channel MOSFETs with very old basic symbols like these, with arrows on the source differentiating between the types. Not sure what the arrows are showing because when the transistors are on, the current can flow in either direction. Anyway, the new updated symbols are a bit more confusing, but at least they also show the substrate tied to the source terminal so you know what you're dealing with. Not sure what the arrow symbolizes. Anyway, N channel requires a positive gate source voltage to turn on and P channel a negative gate source voltage. Okay, let's make something. A simple switch. I use an N channel MOSFET to turn on a light bulb on 120 volt AC connecting the gate to a 10 volt DC. All is connected right, so there we are. So MOSFETs have maximum voltage ratings. One of them is the gate source max voltage, which is basically when the over voltage across the tiny gate capacitor's glass dielectric cracks and breaks it down, ruining the transistor. That's typically around 20 volts, but check the data sheet. But there is another one which is max drain source voltage. I showed how there are a bunch of PN diode junctions in there and from my old diodes video we know diodes can take so much reverse voltage before they enter breakdown or avalanche region, conduct, heat up and blow up. Different MOSFETs have different voltage ratings, so we pick one that can do 500 volts. We supply 10 volts to gate and we turn it on. For the love of One important thing is, like any other switch, MOSFET has a maximum current rating above which it overheats and burns. Because, like any other switch, it's basically a resistor that heats up with current. So since the current can only flow through this channel, which has a thickness as well as a width and a length, if we look at the structure from the top, it shows a certain on resistance between drain and source we call RDS on when MOSFET is used as a switch. We can do two things to reduce RDS on. One is picking a part that has a larger channel length so the resistance is lower. And the other is we can increase the gate to source voltage, push or suck more electrons, making the channel wider, lowering the resistance. Also transistors come in different packages, some of which can dissipate heat better so that they can handle higher currents. This time we are in a good shape with a high voltage high current transistor. And we plug it in with gate voltage off. <laughs> And it turns on, the gate is off. What if we connect the gate voltage? Honor, on, honor. I'm pretty sure I connected everything. <laughs> you remember I said it looks like back-to-back -back diodes in the silicon? One of those is by default shorted, connecting substrate to source. But the other one remains. It is called the body diode that MOSFETs all have. Thinking about it, maybe that's what the arrow in the MOSFET symbol is trying to show. But in most complete symbols, we actually show the body diode to make sure we never forget it. It is a diode as strong as the transistor itself. You might think it is an annoying parasitic diode, but we actually have some good uses for it, which I won't tell you just yet. And that stupid body diode in my setup is what's conducting in the negative cycle of the AC, turning the light half on. So we can't use this circuit to switch AC, unless we rectify the AC first using a full bridge rectifier. Okay, I have my full bridge rectifier connected to my FET circuit and I'm gonna power the gate from a 9 volt battery so it's isolated from the live wires. This time... 
Let's turn it on. I hear something. <laughs> Why is this touching earth? Damn it! I was shorting the 9 volt battery. Let's try again. Okay, let's turn on the gate. Ah! 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 <laughs> it's working! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so finally we can use FETs to switch simple circuits. <laughs> There's a ton more to talk about, I have to make another video on them. So for now, just switch them slowly, powering low power stuff like an LED. Avoid high frequencies and high power in general for now and start learning for free at my sponsor Brilliant. Because I know a lot of you do self-studying and I want to make sure you learn what you need efficiently. Because as I keep saying, Brilliance Interactivity is the best tool for you to feel what you're learning and helps you build troubleshooting skills rather than just memorizing rather complex concepts that are sure to be forgotten if you don't learn them right. Like, it is easy for me to tell you that you can build artificial intelligence from basic switches but do you know how huge the gap between the two is? You can use Brilliance to learn about large language models and how to create and train AI. And that's on top of all things you can learn, like how to code, coding with Python, analyzing data, all the math or science you need, and many more through thousands of interactive lessons at Brilliance that they keep adding to consistently. So make sure you sign up using my link, brilliant.org slash electroboom, because you can learn a ton of things for free through the 30-day free trial. Is that not enough time? My viewers get a lifetime 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Imagine you are paying a small fraction of a school tuition fee but getting access to a massive library of knowledge. Now that's a win. And thank you for watching.